guys what's up it's Courtney um, today I'm gonna be doing a school series video and it's going to be on organizational organizational slash study tips um, for all of you guys who struggle in school at studying if you can't like concentrate enough like these are just some tips to really help in school they help me um, I'm a straight A student so that kind of shows how much these studying tips help but also I'm OCD um, about everything like it's ridiculous um, it's gotten a little bit um, better like I'm not as bad OCD as I used to be but um, yeah that's not the point of this video so today I'm going to be talking about just stuff that you can use um, to help you be successful in school so the first thing you're gonna need are pens and pencils these pencils are like 24 in a pack for like two bucks at Walmart or something like that um, lead which I'm kind of out I need to go buy some more but thank God I'm like not in school I mean I still have my online course um, USBs are really helpful USB drives if you need to save something at school or you have something at home that you need to print off at school they help me so much because sometimes my um, printer does not work um, highlighters 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 these come in a pack these are sharpie highlighters and they come in a pack of five they're probably a little bit more expensive than the usual ones but I I find I've had these for like ever like I'm honestly I'm gonna be a senior this year I've had these since sophomore year um yeah I still have a lot of fluid left in these and there's like I think I have a pink one in here somewhere yeah right here um, they come with two other colors too so they come in a pack of five um, honestly I love these highlighters but you can highlight your notes and I find that if things are brighter I like to um, I'm like I don't know I like to look at them more I like to study what's on there more I tend to memorize things more if I look at it more and read it more so yeah these help me a lot also colorful pens um, you can take your notes in colorful pens. I personally don't do that because I take all my notes in pencil because that's just how I've always been. Um, but highlighters, I highlight a lot. Also with the highlighters, you can color code your notes like main ideas in pink and um, definitions that you need to know in yellow and um, subtopics in green and like stuff you really have to know for a test in like blue or something. Um, that's why I like the um, multi-packs of highlighters instead of just like the yellow. Another thing that I think it's helpful to have are little binder clips and paper clips too. I have a lot of paper clips on my desk back there. And um, these little post-it notes that you can just take one off like if you need to mark a page in a book or your textbook or if you need to read something back again something like that these are awesome for like if you're doing a book report or something and you need to mark a page in a book they're awesome so I really recommend these I also recommend getting a huge eraser um, my AP Chem teacher actually gave this to me because I was student of the week one week um, but yeah I love this thing like so you guys know that um, you can just take notes the way that most people do just write stuff down what I do and what you should really do, it really helps me for classes that are mostly reading, like biology or chemistry. I had to do this like as a grade for my AP chemistry class, but it totally helped me like so much. Um, it helped me um, remember the material more, understand the material more. Um, it's to do Cornell notes. And what you do is um, you split the page about like a third of the way so you have one third of the stuff here I don't even know if you guys can see this and two thirds over here and you have a bottom down here or you mark off a bottom down here but over here you write any main ideas or questions like um, what is the equilibrium constant stand for what's an acid like that's what we did in this um, chapter and then over here you write what it is or answer the question or something like that um, and down here you just write a summary of what is up here so I found like these help me a lot in my AP chemistry class my teacher made us do these for the three hardest chapters in the course and these were the chapters I understood the best 
So that's how much they helped me. So I really recommend doing something like this. Another thing you can do to keep you organized is to take all of your notes in a notebook. This is just a five star notebook. I actually bought this for US history this year, but I actually didn't need it. So I'm using it for um, my online Spanish class to take notes in. Because um, I find like, especially with the foreign language, if I copy stuff down and like look back at it periodically and like, just remember it more and pretty much foreign languages is all memorizing stuff so that really helps me you should try to have one of these for like every class unless your teacher just makes you have like just a binder and dividers but yeah I really recommend these to hold all your notes yeah they really help me keep everything in one place another thing that really helps me are dividers and this is just a random binder it's got nothing really in it um, I have like five sets of dividers actually like three I'd label the first one notes and the second one like homework and the third one like graded stuff and the third one like if it's math I'd label it graph paper and then the back one for me is always labeled paper but dividers help you just like keep everything separate keep your notes out of your graded work which is out of your homework so you're totally organized and you don't walk into class being like oh my god where's my homework another thing that I recommend is getting one of these accordion folders and are you kidding me I really recommend getting one of these accordion folders because it's kind of like a, a binder and dividers but I just I don't know I like these um, I like these a lot we had to use these for my I got this my sophomore year we had to use them for um, a book report we had to do and um, I think they're really 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 helpful for book, bleh, for book reports if you have to do like um, like note cards and so 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 what source cards um, and like you take notes and you put it in here but yeah it keeps everything separate and you can like label the little tabs the next thing I'm going to show you they really really help me in school especially in um, classes where it's mostly um, like definitions or like for my Spanish classes or something help me memorize stuff and they are flashcards flashcards are a must I I highly recommend them like oh my god I flashcard everything it's ridiculous also if your teacher gives you a study guide chances are that um, most of the questions on the study guide are going to come directly from the test. So what I do is if I, I don't really get study guides in my classes anymore, don't know why, I always, I used to always flashcard the study guide. Like I put the, um, the question on one side and the answer on the other. The next advice I have is do not cram. Um, if you're, if you procrastinate and you have a huge test the next day and it's in math and you don't know anything and you're cramming all night long and your test is at 8 30 in the morning it's it's not a good idea if you're gonna cram do it right before you take the test like five minutes before you walk into the class because that's short-term memory most people have a great short-term memory I wouldn't recommend cramming the entire night before you're not gonna get any sleep you're gonna walk into class being like oh my god I don't know anything and chances are you're not gonna remember anything from the night before because um, you're not gonna have any sleep but yeah oh and next thing eat breakfast every morning before school it gives you brain power get your metabolism up totally healthy I'm a big advocate of breakfast eating so do it or I'll come and find you and hunt you down yeah next thing is don't spend too much time on one subject if you have like two two three tests to study for and they're like all on the same day which that really happens a lot to me in high school you, you remember stuff more if you give your brain a break from a subject and go do something else so I wouldn't so like even if you're studying for one sub subject I wouldn't recommend sitting there for like three hours studying you know acids and bases for chemistry because I guess it's just not gonna help you next thing is do not procrastinate especially if you're in high school it's not gonna get you anywhere I'm learning that right now I know as a senior next year I'm gonna have terrible senior itis you're gonna end up cramming you're gonna end up I, I don't know if you work good under pressure I guess 
if you feel like you have to procrastinate, go ahead, but I really don't recommend it. Uh, okay, when you're about to sit down and study and do your homework, I recommend you turn off all distractions like cell phones and laptops. My laptop is behind me. Um, TVs, my TV's right there. It's actually off because I'm filming a video. Yeah, turn off all distractions because you're just gonna like do a problem for like math and then be like, text, 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 text. Oh wait, what am I doing? You know? So I have two more pieces of advice and the first one is to abbreviate. Now, if your teacher, it depends on what kind of teacher you have. If your teacher writes out notes and you copy them, that's cool. But if your teacher is more of a like a lecture teacher, like my US history teacher was, we didn't really take notes. He just kind of sit there and like lectured us for an hour and a half um, as his lesson. And if your teacher's like that, I would recommend taking notes. Like, even if nobody in your class is has paper and pencil out, you're not gonna look like a nerd. You're gonna look like the person who's gonna get an A on the test. And my last piece of advice is, when you're trying to learn something and it's not really making sense to you, try to make connections between what you know, what you understand, and what you're trying to understand. U.S. history, um, my teacher, I'm talking about my U.S. history teacher a lot, but he would um, make connections between modern life and like modern times and past times, and he would relate what happened in the past to um, what could relate to what could happen in the future, like, now. Like, I don't, I couldn't really give you an example, but he just did that kind of stuff. Also, for chemistry, we had to learn about this, um, ensure molecular, molecular forces and, um, hydrogen bonding and stuff. And, um, it, hydrogen bonding is kind of not true anymore. Like, my teacher told us that, like, two days after the AP exam, and we're like, what?! If you've been through chemistry and know what hydrogen bonding is, you totally like get what I'm saying. But yeah, a teacher lied to us, you guys. It's kind of sad. <laughs> Just kidding. Um, but anyway, so like hydrogen bind bonding happens when hydrogen is bonded to nitrogen, oxygen, or fluorine. Since it's nitrogen, oxygen, fluorine, NOF, NOF, I would think of NOF. I don't know why, but every time I think of hydrogen bonding, I think of the word NOF. So that was all of my tips. So I will talk to you guys later. If you have any requests, leave them down below and I will put them on my list of videos to do and I probably will be able to get to them this summer and this coming up fall and yeah, so I will talk to you guys later. I hope you guys have an amazing day or night whenever you watch this. Bye!